Okay, so we're here for another RV interview with a super treat for me because this is my favorite author I'm here with today, author Katie McGarry, who writes young adult, some of the best, whether it's young adult or not, best books I've ever read. So there, Katie, what kind of <laughs> intro is that? i got to live up to that. That is amazing. It's a little intimidating, actually. <laughs> but it's true. I had never read Young Adult, and we share an editor, which yes. maybe everyone doesn't know, and she was in the back seat of the car with me. We were picking her up. We're taking her to the airport or something, and I said, so what, what's new going on at Harlequin? What do you have? And she said, oh, we have this amazing new author, and she had me all excited telling me about the book, though she said it was Young Adult, and then I'm like, I don't really read Young Adult, because I was thinking, like, Young Adult. And I don't know what that was to me, but it yeah. just didn't sound like what I wanted. And she sent me the book, and I waited like three months before I read it. And then I was like, oh, dear God, why did I wait this long? It was so good. Thank you. And I've been a super hooked fan ever since. And you know that I twist Margot, our editor, Margot Lipschultz. I twist her arm and say I have to, as soon as Katie's done writing them, before they're in print, <laughs> I need a copy for me to read. Yeah. I, so. it's, it's, I can't even tell you how great, and honestly, that sounds, because... You know, for me to hear that you love them, you're a huge inspiration to me. I've always loved your stuff. So that to me is just, you know, kind of like I can die a happy girl in the author world. So I'm good. <laughs> well, as long as you keep writing, I will be too. So one of your newest ones now is Walk the Edge. Yes. I got to read Razor ahead of everybody else. Yes, you did. I knew all about Razor before anyone else yes, did. Yes, you did. And you and I have discussed this, but, but you know, for the sake of the interview, um, explain about the Motorcycle Club, your own personal experience with it, because you, it really feels like you know the Motorcycle Club, not as these mean bikers that run around killing people, but as a family. I grew up in a neighborhood where there was um, a Motorcycle Club, an MC, and so my perception of them is completely different from everybody else. Uh, my dad used to work at a liquor store, and which is probably another YA novel waiting to happen at some point. Sure. And my dad, my mom would get tired of me, so I would walk up the two blocks, and my dad would set me up on the counter, and I was like a little girl, blonde hair, pigtails, and and uh, the guys would all stand around and they would talk because um, they don't can't sit because that's that's a bar license, you have to stand. And so they, I would hear the the dropping of a motorcycle. And I'd see the guys come in and they'd have the leather vest and they would buy me Cokes and they would buy me candy bars and they would always say something to make me laugh and they would talk to my dad and, and they were great guys in my neighborhood. They were the ones, if someone was broke down, they would stop. Mm -hmm. If they saw an elderly person trying to like drag a garbage can out, they would stop and they would help. So to me, like it became synonymous with, with people who were there to help. Um, their community. Yes, and their, they and were. Their, and their neighbors, right? Yes, and, and then I went to college. And, you know, I'm sitting around in dorm rooms, and for some reason, it, motorcycle clubs got brought up, and I'm like, oh, yeah, they, they were in my neighborhood, and, like, the gasp was like, people were like, oh, what? And and people do that <laughs> automatic assumption that they are that they sell drugs. That, that well, they've been watching Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. And that is, like, the worst criminals, and they, they, they need to find another job because they're yes. all terrible criminals. Yes, well, exactly, they are. Um, but here's the, here's the thing. Yes, um, there is what's called 1% clubs. 1% clubs means that these are, there are clubs out there that do dabble in illegal, but they're called 1% clubs. 1% clubs, because that means 99% of the rest of the motorcycle riding population yeah. are just communities. They're communities of men who love motorcycles, who want a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And so in order to do the research of this book, I mean, I did have this limited experience, but I wanted to make sure if I was going to write it, I was going to write it legitly as possible. Um, so I contacted um, the local MC of where I had grown up, and I explained who I was. Um, and they permitted me to come hang out with them for six months, unlimited access. Nice. And I did, and it was amazing, truly amazing. Were there truly brawls pinned up on the walls? Yes, there were truly brawls <laughs> pinned up on the walls. I, I, remember, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> that, was, that was very legit that happened. Um, I remember, like, I would just sit and hang out at the bar, and I would have a prospect as, like, who would be assigned to me, you know, just to make sure for my protection. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say that, I don't say, like, oh, like, horrible things were happening, but they did have clubs that happens within the book. I, I did kind of say and explain this in the book. Um, there were 1% clubs who claimed their territory and that mm -hmm. they were supposed to ask permission to ride on the road. Mm -hmm. And these men were like, no, we're not going to ride, ask permission. A good majority of them were veterans. Mm -hmm. Like, we did not go and fight on some foreign soil to come back and ask anyone's permission to ride on the road. Exactly. That is not going to happen. So because of that, sometimes they would have problems that these, these, this 1% club would give them problems. So for that reason, they just want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm this guest coming in, that I was always fine. And also if I ever had any questions, I wasn't getting hit on by some guy, I didn't want to get hit on, you know, something like that. Right. So, Are there guys you wanted to get hit on by? Uh, well, you... I'm, I'm happily married, 17 years <laughs> okay. to this Sunday. Um, but that's a completely different story if I'm you want to ask that question. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, but anyhow, they were amazing. And I remember sitting there and this guy at the bar, like he was just answering questions, really awesome. And finally, like I just couldn't stand anymore. I'm like, why are there bras on the wall? Like, what is the story associated with that? Like, and I am like coming up as a writer, all of these, like all these things that you have to do to do it. And he looked at me, he's like, I don't know. I'm like, what do you mean? I don't know. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to tell you the honest to God truth. He said, they just put them up there. And I'm like, that doesn't happen. You're lying to me. There's some like secret thing. And he's like, no, no, no. And literally as we're talking, some girl just took off her bra, took it out from her shirt and put it up on the wall. So the guys and were like, we're like, not sure why this is happening, but there it goes. <laughs> yeah. And, and sure enough, it was, he's just like, they just do. He said, at some point, some girl just did it as a joke, and then girls will come in, and they think it's fun to do, so they do them. And I'm like, that's expensive. <laughs> yeah, <it's real> expensive. <laughs> he's expensive like, way to paper the walls. He's yeah. like, you know what? We're not going to stop. So I was like, okay, that's, that's cool. I get it. Well, one thing I like the most about your books is you write extremely damaged kids. I mean, they've been through a lot. Yeah. But you always write them. They're they're regardless of how much they've been through and how many reasons they could have for being terrible people, they're at heart very genuine, caring kids who are looking for a good way out. Yes. And you write them a way out. Yes. And so when I, when I was reading Razor's story, I got that too, that this was like a community, a family for people that didn't have a whole lot of family somewhere else. So. And when I um, grew up in my neighborhood, um, I had a, a complicated home. Um, I had a complicated neighborhood. My friends had very complicated homes. It's a good homes. word to say, it, complicated. Complicated. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't mean there wasn't love. It doesn't mean that there was, everything was all hell all the time. It just means it was complicated. Mm -hmm. And um, when I grew up, my friends were my family. Like, they're the ones who got me through everything. They're the ones who made me laugh. They're the ones who were there when I was crying. And they're the ones who got in my face when I was screwing up. Because I'm going to be honest, I, I messed up. I messed up a ton. Well, you're human. Who doesn't? I, I mean, I, well, I made my fair share. Between the ages of 14 and 19, I, yeah. I have an entire truckload of... Well, you lived to tell about it. So. Well, and that's, that's the point. I did mm -hmm. live to tell about it. I experienced more adult problems and issues between the ages of 14 and 19 than some adults will face in their entire lives. Yeah. That's the truth. More than once I was told I would amount to nothing. And it just kind of became, to me, I was going to do something. And for me, that was college. And I was on my own. I was already told no one was paying for it. And, and I was a smart girl, but I wasn't like the one at the end of the YA novel who's like going to totally have the full scholarship now. Like I, <laughs> I got points on the ACT for signing my name correctly, and that was about it. Right. Um, <laughs> so when I write these books, I write the books I needed because at the time, YA was not a genre. Right. There was The Outsiders. And I wasn't a book reader. I, I was a reluctant reader. You could not get me to read a book to save my life. It's funny. I was the same way. And I think part of that is because they didn't give us good books in school. They gave yes. us depressing material. Yes. There was no uplifting, wonderful, happy ending that we like in, in the genre. Yes. It was just horrible stuff. It was a way to turn kids off reading, I think. I am um, a teacher. We had to read for a class, um, The Outsiders by C. Hinton. And we had a book report due on a Monday. And I remember rolling in on a Friday night. And you know that feeling when you're just wired and you can't go to sleep? Very well. Yeah. And, and I remember I rolled over, turned on the lights, and I read this book. And I thought, man, I'm just going to read it long enough just to make me go to sleep. I could quote to you the entire first yeah. page. I've read that book so much. It took people by storm, didn't it? It, it changed because it was me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I watched TV and I never saw me. Like, I saw these beautiful houses with these beautiful people and, and all these perfect lives. And here comes mom and dad and they save the day. That wasn't my life. So you found a rapport. And I think you do, you go to a lot of schools to talk to kids. Yes. And I think that's probably so important. Yeah. It, it, it is. It, it means the world to me. It. I mean, that's a big part of, I don't want to say promotion because you're not really promoting, no. you're going, I mean, it helps that with your books, but you go because you really care and to talk to these kids. I very rarely will allow books to be sold at my school visits. I mean, if a school like really, really wants to, like, I'm not going to do it a lot of times, but they have to set it up, they have to go out of their way, but um, because kids can smell a phony a mile away. Sure. They know what your intentions are the moment yeah. you walk in. I write really tough books and I write and I'm unapologetic about it they they say words that kids on buses have said since well, the you dawn write of time. very real I mean that's <laughs> yeah. the thing that's what I said yes. when I was thinking young adult I was thinking like you were talking about this polished happy-go-lucky mm -hmm. leave it to beaver type kids and that's not what they are no. at all no. and but they and, and you know they're young my husband and I married right out of high school and these kids fall in love and you know they're in love for life yes so they're you know they're of the high school age but you know it's the real deal for them i am going to celebrate my 17th wedding anniversary this coming sunday you're still such a 
young pup. And um, <laughs> I have a beautiful life. And I'm not going to say mm -hmm. it was easy, but um, I write tough issues because I want to show kids that there's hope. All right, love stories. Well, because, because the I'm world a love is story full girl. of tough issues. Yes. I mean, it really, especially these days for kids. Yes, yeah. yes. It, I, I don't want to shy away from it. And I, I read The Outsiders thinking he had a tough life and he came out on the other side. And that meant the world to me. The only thing that was wrong with the story is that he and Cherry did not hook up at the end. And that's how I knew I was a romance girl. Yeah, right. Like, that, right. Yeah, you did. <laughs> that's what needs to be fixed. That's, that right. is the one thing I need to change in that book. And um, if they had had fan fiction back then, I probably would have been writing fan fiction of, right. of how that book should have ended. I, I, I write love stories because I have an amazing husband. Mm -hmm. And I did not know what love was for a very long time. I knew what it wasn't. And I didn't know what it was. And I met him. And it's not easy. I mean, there are still days. I mean, we've been married 17 years, and there are still days I roll over and think, I could probably smother him with a pillow right now, and he could probably do the same to me and it'd be okay. But, but love is loving each other even when you don't like each other. So Ryan, one of the characters, right? Yes. Was Ryan a little bit of your husband? Yeah, the second book, Dare You Two, in the Pushing Limits series, that is actually the closest I will ever come to writing my real-life story. It's not my story, but right. it's the closest I'll ever come. I understood Beth's hurts way more than I wish I would. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was my Ryan. He is, a, yeah, I was the girl with the, the dyed black hair and it was the nineties and the baby doll dresses. And, and I was never going to fall for anyone ever. And he was the baseball player and football player and whatever here, a ball, there, a ball everywhere, ball, ball, that was him. <laughs> and, you know, the UK baseball cap and always in, you know, his, his athletic stuff. And he swept me off my feet. I mean, he pursued me and that's Beth and Ryan. <laughs> Well, that's what was so great about that book because I loved all of them. But, like, Razor's the tough guy. She's the nice girl. Um, Isaiah is the tough guy. She's the nice girl. Yes. And then with Beth and Ryan, Beth was the rough girl, and he was the yes. nice guy. It was, And it was super fun. It, I loved it. It was. I mean, I remember when I first met my husband, I cursed a lot more than I currently do. Yeah, you don't much now. Yeah, I don't so much now. Well, also having, having three kids, like, I, I watch myself with mm -hmm. the tendency a little bit more. Um, so I don't, but at the time, like he couldn't stand like cursing. And I remember sometimes doing it just to see, like, I always was, I was pushing like your Beth. I was, I was yeah. like Beth. I was always kind of pushing being like, now you're going to give, now you're going to give, now you're going to give. And he would just be like, you know, I don't particularly like it, but no, I'm not giving. Yeah. And good. yeah, he, as I said, he's, he's a great guy. He's the type of guy that if I eat pizza, he brings up a, a thing of water because he knows I'm going to get thirsty in the middle of the night. So he remembers. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that like, I know that doesn't sound like much, but to me. No, it does, because that's, that's the, the same nice thing I things. have. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. You know, while we're talking about tough girls like Beth. Yes. Um, one of my favorite characters, well, not even just one, my all-time favorite character of yours is Abby. I love Abby. And when Abby first came out, it was, an, it was like if you bought this one book, you got to read Abby, and otherwise you didn't. And I was devastated because everybody needed to read Abby's story. That was, it was, just blew me away. But now it's actually out, right? So anybody can read Abby's July book? July 1st. July 1st, Abby's story will be available ebook to everybody. And what is the title of it again? Chasing Impossible. That's right, yeah. Yes. I remember characters' names, not so much titles. Yeah, Abby is actually one of my favorite heroines I've not, mine ever too. written. She, what a tough girl. Uh, she's tough, and she's amazing. And she's, and she's compassionate and yes, sweet. Yeah, yeah like, but she, she doesn't take crap from anybody. No, uh -uh. She says exactly what's on Well, because she's learned mind. she can't. She's no. learned she has to deal it out. Yeah. And, but what I love of her is her loyalty. And, and she literally would do anything for anybody mm -hmm. at any time, break any rule. But she loves, she loves so fiercely, but she can't let anybody know she loves fiercely. Yeah, she's she was, a, she was a tough nut to crack. Yeah, she her. was awesome. Yeah. I loved her, too. Yeah. So one last question for you, because yes. when I read your books, I laugh and I cry. When you write them, do you laugh and you cry? Yeah, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever been given on writing is that if I don't laugh when I'm writing, then nobody else will. Mm -hmm. If I don't cry, then right. nobody won't won't cry either. Right. And sometimes it's tough because I do write tough stuff. Every single one of my books, I sit down and I think for a while of what part of me I'm going to put into it. What what hurt do am I carrying over from 14 to 19 when I throw it in there? And um, there's it, there are times you just don't want to deal with that. You don't want to touch that emotion and. I can find myself glossing it over, and then I'll stop, and I'll remember that, and I'm like, I didn't cry Gotta once. Gotta make myself cry. Gotta yeah. make myself cry. Yeah. Gotta bear it. Yeah, and it, 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 it works. I, so far, so good. 
Yes, yeah, so, so far so good. Well, yeah. I'm hooked, and I'm sure anyone I can talk into reading them, everyone who's already read them I know are huge fans, <laughs> and you. anyone I can talk into reading them are huge fans. And whenever people ask me my favorite author, it's you. Oh, so. Well, thank you. Thank All right, you. Well, thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. This was wonderful, and yes. I know readers are going to love it. Well, thank you. Thanks.